G'day guys, welcome to another video. Um, we left off last time with the fuselage all, all painted um, and this video I'm going to attempt to finish at least one wing and we'll see how we go. Just before we start though, probably a bit down this week I guess with what's going on in the world. Um, for me personally, that particular flag that's hanging up in my hangar here means a lot to me. Um, that flag actually flew at Camp Baker, the Australian compound in Kandahar, Afghanistan. So if you've been watching the news, um, yeah, heart goes out to the people that are over there at the moment. So, don't want to be too much of a Debbie Downer, but that's where my thoughts are at the moment. Hope you enjoy this movie. All right, just out of the paint booth again. Um, had a few issues this time, so I painted the primed, primed the wing. Um, I had about a litre of primer left and then four litres in a new tin. <clears throat> so I mixed up, well, no, I had enough paint to make a litre. I'm thinning at 50%, so arguably I had 500 mils of paint plus the catalyst. Um, mixed up a litre, sprayed the wing, then I opened the brand new can, and as you're aware, you know, all the pigment, if you like, all the, you know, the thick stuff goes to the bottom and the honey goes to the top. Grabbed a couple of sticks, mixed it up. I'll throw a picture up if I can work out how to do it. And I've got all these massive crow's feet, or um, look exactly like seagulls actually, like a little tick, all, all across the wing. Now I've just come in, um, well yesterday when it was still wet, rubbed it all back with a bit of thinners and a rag. Um, this time, mix up the paint with an electric drill, gave it a good 10 minutes, mixed it all up. Uh, Seems to have gone okay this time. So, one wing primed, give it a few days. Um, you see from the photos, I got like little islands where I um, went back to bare metal rather than do the whole wing. So I gave those a touch up, couldn't resist it, and then another wet coat over the whole wing. Um, now I might be able to just do some 400 if I can see any lines. Uh, looks like a map of Australia or something in there. I'll just just rub those out Top of the wing was worst so no inverted flying from now on um, Another lesson learnt I guess another wing to go keep persevering but End results really good All right, I turned into a bit of a recovery job turned out really well so Got the white on the wing, so we're looking at the starboard wing, fantastic, with a shine, bit of trim, I'll give that, i only give that three or four days before I mask it up, got the heater on at the moment, and it's, uh, it's up to 18 degrees in the tent, so I'll just let that cure, going to mask the leading edge, do a barber's pole stripe where the wing strut attaches um, or the poor man's landing light so should look good and then do it again on the next wing and here she is looking pretty put the spats on or the no spat the mains just get in the way at the moment um, just doing working on the the door so just riveted up this door I uh, chose to close the door and lock it um, just a word with those the forward locking tab, I, ha I had them rolling forward to lock. Well, that doesn't work because it hits the, um, the cabin frame. Um, they have to roll backwards and push forward, sort of opposite to what you think, so they can, yeah. Anyway, uh, with very little trimming, well, none at the moment, um, my door fits perfectly. I might just do a bit of a lead-in on the um, stops, like just bend it a bit so you've got a bit of a lead-in. Um, and aluminium rivets all the way around. I did find in the photo guide, not the plans, but the photo guide does specify aluminium rivets through the outside gusset. Obviously the inside is your, your tough A4 or A5 rivets, <coughs> the steel stem ones. It's a bit daunting at first. Pulled the first one. Um, I'm using the pneumatic gun. What I found, yeah, the hand, between the hand riveter and the pneumatic gun, there's no difference really just in speed so it does it quicker doesn't mean it pulls it tighter 
um, I don't believe anyway, because the stem will snap off at a certain point. So three crunches with the hand crimper, but on this one pull of the trigger, bang, done. Um, I Clicoed every single hole, as opposed to every second one, like you do with aluminium, aluminium. Um, so I knew the windscreen would fit. So every single hole took a Clico out and riveted. So that went really well. Fix up my V16 antenna, rock solid now. Put the gusset in, there's three new rivets just on the other side of four new rivets. Well, the elevator's on and the fin's off. You notice I um, I just beefed up the, what would it be, the upstop um, with a plate there in between these L angles and an L angle across um, just to give the Teflon like that something to to hit against and then just sand that until you get you uh, 28 degrees plus or minus 2 so 26 to 30 so you got a broad range there and that's what limits are for so don't sweat the small stuff up elevator just maybe a better look at that um, that plate that's probably 25 thou or 025 um, and I've got a decent L angle across there nice and strong otherwise it just goes into the skin and the skin um, the skin would just flex the reason I wanted that nice and strong obviously every pre-flight you're going to get in there full and free whack whack the up elevator so that's going to cop a bit of a flogging also if you forget to put a gust lock on or something okay a bit of a mess going on for me um, anyway I'm doing the elevator so I've got the console opened up I've run the um, rudder cables while I was at it my plan there was with the supplied um, eighth inch galvanized cable work from longest to shortest so the rudder cables are the longest so I'll cut those you see those hanging out the back so there got the uh, D shackles if you like or they're terminated to the rudder, rudder pedals and ready to go for the rudder got my elevator chocked um, roughly to neutral and chocked at the, at the top as well swaged the ends castellated nuts nothing's lock, um, split pin yet that's fine and just spent the morning doing my doing my cables so nice swaged joint there through the uh, the horseshoe looking thing the castellated nut point to note on the elevator you got that stiffening Z angle, Z angle, um, which gets in the way of trying to uh, do the split pin. Um, I keep a split pin in the top. I've seen a couple of seen a couple of people just with a bit of alloy, but that can slip down if it's only got one attachment point. Just having a bit of alloy over the top, it'll slide down and be counterintuitive. So the split pin works fine. The cable can't come out. Uh, I'm in through my keeper bear in mind the keeper is um it doesn't rub against that it's just there just in case if it rubs i've only got next to no tension on these at the moment because i only just connected them up down on down in the hole under the fuselage so i just took my time uh, i'm not sure if i need the torch i think that this hatch has moved from other designs found it very awkward to get up in here you see my bit of cardboard um, during construction they call out to put lines between the centre pivot and the for the bell crank so I just cut a bit of cardboard taped it on and that gives you the angle for the bell crank in relation to the that'll be your down cable up at the top so the cables actually cross over the bottom cable at the back comes to the top of the bell crank check your plans um, and the bottom one my turnbuckles, I've put them just, just here out of the way. Um, consideration there is if I do climb up, I'm not going against the lockwise, and that's the way they turned out. Um, my swaging, etc. I went and bought some more because I, I redid about six or eight of those, I guess, because the elevator. And then looking down the back, get some light in here. 
uh, I've got my cables. I still need to run a bungee, a bungee, and the, uh, the rudder cables are just laying in their slack at the moment. That's where we're at, just about to unblock the elevator and move the joystick for the first time. Also, it sort of doesn't look right to me at the moment. The rudder cable runs above your flapper on push rod and under the flap torque tube. It sort of goes in that gap. But there's very limited space and obviously this moves a little bit as well. But once they're tightened up, we'll see how that works out. So there's also a bit of access. It's easy to forget this is here actually. So to, to split pin this, do it in the cockpit side rather than try and do it from up underneath. Um, so yeah, happy with that, the way that's going at the moment. My rudder cables run through. Um, everything misses. The When these are tight, the seat belt bolt may need to be turned around, have the head on the inside. Not sure yet. I think the cable runs just above it. And I also picked it up somewhere along the lines. I put a bit of brake tube on the just one of the rudder cables. Mixing my words here a bit guys, sorry. Because um, where these cross over, uh, for obvious reasons, that's just going to provide a bit of uh, friction. So slip along nicely. Um, and got those done at the front. What I did there was, I think you supplied with 80 feet of cable. So I ran the cable, then I literally pulled out about 50 feet and went over to my, so the cable ran out through the door, over to my bench, bolted my vise to the bench, did all my swaging over on the bench, then pulled all the cable back through. Um, that worked for me. So the last swage will be when the rudder's fitted. So that's where we're at at the moment. All going well. Fitted my elevator trim, um, which is on and works. Flick that on. I've got a light. Um, and my trim works. Now, interesting with this too, I've set mine up. So it's from my model aircraft transmitter, I guess. I push the top is down. I push the bottom is up, nose up. Um, some people may do that differently, but that's what worked for me. I know with my model aeroplanes, you slide the, you know, the trim lever up or push the top is down trim, bottom is up trim. So I've set it up, if you like, the same as the joystick. So you push forward to go down, pull back to go up. So, and it's marked on here. I'm just hoping my test pilot agrees with me on that. But that's the way I've set mine up. I think it's 50-50 from what I can see, but let me know what you think with the elevator trim, if there is a standard. Um, so press the bottom of the switch is that nose up top of the switch pushes the nose down all right guys so the wings are uh, continuing all sprayed white on a cold day trying to heat the tent up got my mask on and um, yeah it's looking pretty good I'll scuff that back clean it up give it a coat of orange wish me luck one of the issues I have got here this is manpower and my setup I guess I literally lay on my back and spray upwards to get the leading edge done. But I've gone with the orange stripe, broken it up with the barber's pole stripe, or the poor man's landing light, and then out to the tip. So it should be, work out well. That stripe on the other side comes around and picks up the strut, the strut mounting point where I've made it straight. So it goes straight and then curls outboard. Should look okay, but we'll see what we end up with. All right, so back working on the tail. I've just taken these back off, the um, fair lead cover for the rudder cable. So I put this sheath on. Lucky I hadn't done, hadn't terminated the end yet. I noticed that the cable rubs on this L angle. So you can either scallop the L angle out, or I've put about a 300 mil piece of brake line that'll run down to here somewhere, and also it protects it from the skin. Can't miss. So it's through my Teflon block in a brake line. Once I get this to sit where it wants to sit, um, I will just do up my P-clamp wherever it wants to be. It may even want to be up the other way or back here or just wherever it wants to sit and make it happy. Um, and that'll be nice. I may have to put something on just to stop that from gradually going inside the fuselage. 
but this is something I picked up just prior to closing the dorsal fin because that closes off the access in here. I had a look down on the inside. It's just about an eighth of an inch off that L angle. So with vibration, the cable's definitely going to hit. So you need to do something about that. Okay, fin and dorsal fin fitted. So really happy with this. Just move in a bit. It's um, just a perfect fit. It was worth all that effort. If you remember back to my previous videos, took the tailplane on and off about three times, made a template. Um, you know, remove the tailplane, put the fin back on, put the template on, and then you just get this nice perfect slot around here with about eighth of an inch clearance. Camera may not show it. Eighth of an inch all around. Then I went down to the Clark Rubber, local rubber shop. Got some uh, channel. Just because you've got, you know, just a, a blunt metal edge, it just sort of sits there. So instead of a finger fillet or anything like that, that's just wedged in there, and so it's a U-channel, um, and sort of pushed it down, move it out of the way to get the rivets, so the rivet heads just miss, and just come up really good, really happy with that. Um, had a nice, a nice fit anyway, so, you know, do this right, don't need the big shrouds or anything to hide, hide anything, or make it more aerodynamic, so... Um, yeah, looking good, going well. Alright boys, we've finished the wing. Yes we have. We've painted, what's that, the uh, right hand wing. All complete. Uh, there might be a little run on there, but I know where it is, no one else does. Um, really happy. One more wing to go. Just have a look at this. Bit of a mess, but white paint is still wet, so the mask comes off and basically get out of the tent. So that's my barber's pole stripe on the leading edge. It looks fantastic, looking really good. As you can see, I had to lay down and spray the leading edge up that way. There's only about 400 mil between the wing and the floor. Then I get a nice white band just there. Fuel cap, uh, wing root. Had enough paint left, this time I remembered just to touch up a few rivets on the fuselage. And the bottom surface of the wing, so you look out you'll see the, the white triangle I guess, the leading edge. Just the band. This is where the strut, so the strut will run in there. If I got the angle right from the front, the strut should continue up because that rolls around and does my barbell pole stripe. So there you go. One wing ready to come out of the, um, I'll give it a couple of days. Find somewhere to put it, get the other one in here, prime, paint. One more wing to go. You can see the light at the end of the tunnel, so we'll get another wing in. Um, prime it a bit better this time. Obviously clean it, clean it, prime it. White goes on, orange will go on. Touch wood. We will be done painting. Alright guys, there you go. Pretty much got the tail on. Uh, the rudder's just slipped on. I have to snip the um, pin off and lock wire that, secure that. Then pretty much the tail done. I can route, or tighten up the um, rudder cables and move on to the next wing, get that painted. So getting excited, looking fantastic. Got an aeroplane, make up a registration number, that'll be next. Uh, thanks for watching. Hope you enjoyed that one. See you on the next video.